they have too few boats. Uh, they have, uh, they, they are, there are only two boats working this area. Uh, I'm told that the New Orleans police put out a call to all its officers saying, if you have a boat, bring it here, help us. But the officers who have boats cannot get to them in many cases because the roads are flooded to their homes. Uh, and so I just saw in uh, saw some people bring in jet skis. They are going out on jet skis to try and rescue these people. Uh, there's uh, one story that there's an officer up on this bridge, uh, and his mother is stranded in one of the homes that we can see from here. Uh, I can't imagine what that would be like. The people who have been rescued uh, are sometimes having to be put back in the water. Urged under, uh, I guess, a couple of feet of water, so they have to stand out there until they can manage to get the boat across and then take a big group of them into an entrance ra ramp of I-10, which is now being used as a boat ramp. And you see these people walking up, Paula, they look shell-shocked. They, they look like refugees. They are refugees. Uh, they're piling them into vehicles as best they can and taking them uh, back into town uh, where hopefully they can get some some warm clothing and 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 help uh, they have clearly lost everything uh, and I am told what I am looking at is not the worst of it uh, that the central part of this ward is much worse off than what I'm seeing here uh, there will be deaths I have no doubt about it Paula and you're talking about this tremendous toll on, and human cost the storm has taken. We understand as desperate as some of those uh, survivors, at least the ones we saw waiting in the water, look as they looked up to the helicopter, I guess, looking for rescue. Is there some, some huge health concerns with poisonous snakes out there, fire ants and mosquitoes infesting the city? Have you heard much about uh, how concerned health officials are about those folks who uh, weren't uh, fortunate enough to get out? Can I tell you, Paul, uh, Paul, I think right now people are thinking about something much more elemental. They're just trying to save their lives. It comes down to that. Uh, yes, we heard things in the previous days about the possibility of, of there being uh, serious health issues because of the rising water. But this, this is life and death. This is life and death. There's just no doubt about it. Gene, uh, you haven't... Gene, you haven't had the ability since you're in the field to see what this looks like from the aerials. It just goes on and on and on. And from our perspective here, you're not talking about you know, dozens of homes. It looks like hundreds and hundreds of homes affected. I, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. And certainly as far as my eye can see, and I'm, I'm at a fairly high vantage point, and on our way out here, we thought we were seeing horrible flooding when we went through neighborhoods where, where cars were covered. Well, that turned out to be nothing uh, to what we saw when we got out here. And as I say, they say that there are areas inaccessible by roadways, something we can't get to, where it looks even worse. Uh, rescue personnel told tell me that there are, uh, there are bodies uh, floating in the water there. Uh, the people I see, these, these are people, Paula, let me explain, who are people of limited resources. These are people who did not have the wherewithal to get out of town. They didn't have cars. There's no way they could pay for a hotel room. They stayed in their houses because they had to. Oh. And, uh, and, and then the water came up, and, and I'm sure there were elderly here, there were infirm here. Uh, it's, just, it's just horrific. It is so, so sad. Uh, Jean Meserve, thank you. We wish those rescuers uh, a lot of luck. We mentioned at the top of the hour, Hurricane Katrina has been downgraded to a tropical storm, uh, but she is still...